three, two, one. Hello, my name is Brandon Lara. I am a senior at Western New Mexico University, studying for my Bachelor of Science in General Business with a minor in Digital Forensics. This presentation is based on the data published in the Uber 2017-2018 U.S. Safety Report. The scope of the report is to educate the public on critical safety points of interest with using the Rideshare platform with some of the most focus on sexual assault incidents. The methodologies reported are motor vehicle incidents, fatal physical assaults, and sexual assaults. In this report, Uber is trying to educate the public on the levels of safety concern associated with using their platform. Although these are concerning topics of interest, it is important to note that rideshare platforms have and will benefit users in a vast array of scenarios. Uber is notably accepting accountability for the incidents, and with this report, they are striving to achieve a safer environment. Uber's chief legal officer, as quoted in his introduction letter, Most companies don't talk about issues like sexual violence, because doing so risks inviting negative headlines and public criticism. Confronting sexual violence requires honesty, and it's only by shining a light on these issues that we can begin to provide clarity on something that touches every corner of society. The moment is now for companies to confront it, count it, and work together to end it. The first methodology is motor vehicle related fatalities. The U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issues annual traffic fatality information to the public through the Fatality Analysis Reporting System, also known as FARS. The data compiled in the Uber 2017 to 2018 U.S. Safety Report is built off the standards developed by FARS with every data set being corroborated with the fatalities recorded in the FARS database. Uber reports that there were 107 vehicle-related fatalities between 2017 and 2018, 49 out of about 1 billion rides for 2017, and 58 out of about 1.3 billion rides, uh, <clears throat> an approximate 5 millionth percent of total rides completed for both years. That is, however, an estimated 5% decrease year over year. There are three major categories of fatality causes. Crash without motor, with motor vehicles at 65%, crash with pedestrian or pedal cycle, 31%, and other at 4%. Of the total fatalities in the report for years 2017 to 2018, 72 were occupants and 35 were non-occupants. What I mean by this is, the occupants include drivers using the app, riders using the app, third-party drivers, third-party passengers, third-party motorcyclists, and the non-occupants include drivers or riders <clears throat> using the app that were struck outside of the vehicle as pedestrians. Uh, and then third-party pedestrians, pedal cyclists, and other unknown. For comparison of vehicle-related fatalities while using the Uber platform and the national statistics, you can see that the results founded in the Uber report are infinitesimal to the U.S. results. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's 2017 to 2018 traffic safety facts, there were 37,473 vehicle related fatalities for 2017. 29,770 are classified as occupants, and 7,117 are classified as non occupants and that is for the U.S. total. For 2018, there were a total of 36,560 vehicle-related fatalities. At 28,567 are classified as occupants, 
and 7,354 are classified as non-occupants for the whole U.S. That is, since Uber corroborated all their results with the collected statistics of NHTSA's traffic safety facts, Uber-related vehicle fatalities are only about 15 hundredths percent of the national total. The next methodology are fatal physical assaults. The fatal physical assault methodology consists of physical assault incidents that resulted in one or more fatalities based on these criteria. One, the incident involved at least one person on an Uber facilitated trip, but not necessarily with parties paired by the Uber app. Two, the incident occurred between parties that were paired by the Uber app and it occurred within 48 hours of the trip ending. According to the report, there were a total of 19 fatal physical assaults in the U.S. between 2017 and 2018, 10 during 2017 and 9 during 2018, out of about 2.3 billion Uber rides, or 1 in every 122 million rides collectively, a total of about 1 millionth percent of total rides between the, year, the two years surveyed. Uh, per the U.S. Department of Justice's Office of Justice Programs Bureau of Justice Statistics 2018 Criminal Victimization Report, the Uniform Crime Reporting Program estimates murder, murder per capita is about one-tenth of every 1,000 residents, or about 33,000 for 2017, the most current data available for the United States. Uber's results compared to the DOJ's most recent publication shows that Uber platform-related physical fatalities is only about three hundredths percent of the estimated national total. The final methodology are sexual assaults while using the Uber platform. Prior to, partnering, uh, prior to Uber partnering with experts from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center and the Urban Institute to develop a taxonomy, they did not have a standard for definitions of unwanted sexual encounters. In order for Uber to establish an official sexual assault for purposes of their latest report, one or more of the following criteria must be true. 1. The incident occurred during an active Uber-facilitated trip, not necessarily with parties paired by the Uber app. And 2. The incident occurred between parties that were paired by the Uber app, and it occurred within 48 hours of the trip's completion. There are five major groups of sexual assault, or unwanted sexual encounters, which include non-consensual kissing of a non-sexual body part, which for 2017 is 517 reported incidents and 594 reported incidents for 2018. Attempted non-sexual, non-consensual sexual penetration shows for 2017 307 reported incidents and 280 for 2018. Non-consensual touching of a sexual body part resulted in 1,440 reported incidents for 2017 and 1,560 for 2018. Non-consensual kissing of a sexual body part shows 390 report, reported incidents for 2017 and 376 for 2018. And then finally, non-consensual sexual penetration reported incidents for 2017 are 229 and 235 for 2018. Yes, it seems as though Uber's results are marginally low. There is a clear consensus that there are serious concerns with using rideshare services. 
many recent events that have made headlining news tend to bring negative connotations with using these services. Although it is not fair to assume that it is not safe to use services like those offered by Uber and other rideshare platforms, but there are there is an essential awareness that must be met. I do commend Uber for their efforts with this report and those going forward to bring a heightened level of awareness to their consumers. Just as companies may release financial records for shareholders to visualize company progress, Uber is leading industries with a sense of accountability by providing these statistics accompanied by their solutions to mitigate these risks. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you are able to find value in statistical reports such as this one. We cannot change the world by any means, but we can help change the levels of awareness. Thank you.